One of Britain's biggest house builders, Taylor Wimpy, says it's reviewing the contracts on homes it sold between 2007 and 2011 after it's emerged that they're now unsellable. The contracts allowed the ground rent to double every 10 years for 50 years. MPs have called it sharp practice and accused Taylor Wimpy of corporate irresponsibility. Claire Scott is caught up in all this. She bought a three-bedroom house in Bolton from Taylor Wimpy. This summer she thought she'd sold it until the buyer's solicitors spotted the terms of the contract covering the ground rent. Andrew Fletcher went out to see her. This is our house, the middle one, number 25, which we've had to rent out now because we couldn't sell it earlier this year. Three-storey townhouse, mid-terrace. We bought it in um, June 2011. It was our first time house. We were looking at other houses in the area but we decided to buy this one because we were offered a £10,000 deposit contribution so that meant that we could get on the property ladder sooner. And you've bought another house but you've been unable to sell this one? Yeah. As it turned out we completed on the house that we wanted as this one fell through and this one fell through due to advice from solicitors to our buyers that they shouldn't buy it at all because of this lease clause that we didn't know even existed on it which was that the um, the ground rent of 295 a year doubles every 10 years until it reaches nearly 10,000 pounds by 2060 a year we got all our paperwork out and uh, lo and behold it does state that clause but at no point was it raised to us by our solicitors that this was a particularly severe issue that it could have um, resale issues for us in the future and we were never at any point during the buying process did we get offered the option to buy the freehold to try and make our house sale go through we even contacted the freehold company about buying the freehold they want four to six thousand pounds for it and you're expecting your first child this should be a very happy time for you what effect is this situation having on you <laughs> Many sleepless nights, very extremely stressful. We were buying our second house and uh, it was a bit of a project and we were doing it up and um, all of a sudden we don't have the money or the ability to do that carefree and happily. We've not had a minute really to think about the fact that the excitement of having a first baby because, you know, this problem's not going away at all until either the freehold sorted or we can sell it, which we won't be able to sell it. We just can't now. There's too much coverage on these sorts of houses that will allow us to sell it. Solicitors, they'll be advising their clients against these houses, so this doesn't go away for us. Claire Scott, Taylor Wimpy told us they hadn't realised until recently that these leasehold contracts where the ground rent can double every 10 years were a problem. Since 2011, their policy, they say, has been to link the ground rent payments to inflation. Taylor Wimpy doesn't get the ground rent now because it's sold the freeholds on, but the company is planning, it says, to talk to every homeowner affected and to try to find a solution. But Taylor Wimpy was unable to tell us how many homes were sold with these contracts. They say they're looking into it. Louis Burns is the managing director at Leasehold Solutions. He advises people about leasehold contracts. Louis, when Claire Scott complained to Taylor Wimpy in October this year, they told her that such contract terms were common practice at the time. Is that the case? Well, the, the common practice, it's partly true. It's because developers choose to uh, offer those contracts because they make additional money on it. So it, it's not accepted, it's not normal. The ground rent is ridiculously onerous on those, uh, on those terms, but it's common because they all do it. Why would a solicitor advise you not to touch Claire's property or one with a similar contract? Because the implications of the ground rent are very serious in the future. So although the ground rent is, is still relatively small, uh, it, it, the amount of money that the incoming um, buyer would have to pay on ground rent, I mean, if the ground rent's £9,000 in 50 years from now, that's virtually £200 a year. So there are all sorts of implications as to how much money you would have to pay. And also the stress testing that mortgage companies would do on how much they could lend to somebody, uh, ground rent, that onerous, would come into that equation also. Why are the house builders doing this then, selling houses as leasehold rather than freehold? To make money. Uh, it's, it's a huge amount. I mean, we looked at, uh, it seems that Taylor Wimpy sold Claire's house and 23 others on the same freehold title for £176,000. So if, if they'd done the honourable thing and the ground rent was a peppercorn, uh, there would be virtually no value in that for them. What they told us when we asked them is that they only made 1% more profit with this kind of um, 
ground rent agreement than they would have made with the, the usual kind, which where it's just linked to the rate of inflation. So they were implying there isn't massively more profit in it for them. Um, well, we, we got Taylor Wimpy's um, statement this morning and we've had specialist enfr enfranchisement lawyers and valuers trying to decipher it and we still don't know the full, the clear meaning of their, of their um, press release. So it's not true. Uh, the ground rent, if it was linked to RPI, just as an RPI uh, multiple would, would have been in the 50th year for Claire, would have been around £700 instead of nine nine and a half thousand. What can someone do if they're in that situation? They've signed up to this ground rent. Well, the first, the first step is to go to your conveyancing solicitor, and if they haven't explained the implications of this, uh, then they could be uh, guilty of professional negligence. Uh, but also, uh, there are some uh, better legal protections that have come in now. So if you signed this contract after October 2015, uh, you could uh, look for redress under the Consumer Protection Act. She didn't, sadly, did she? she no, she didn't, but, but still unfair contractual terms... Uh, still covers it. It's less draconian. It, less, it offers less protection for leaseholders, but it's still an option. But also to do what Claire has done. You know, I was at the all party, all party parliamentary group on Wednesday where this was brought up, and there was, you know, there was a lot of um, anger in the room about what happened here. So going to the, your developer and, and going to the press and writing to your MP is also another thing that you can do. Louis Burns, thank you very much for that.